Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu ala rasulillah. We're in part two, and we were talking about the, some of the attributes of Allah Ta'ala, and then we talked about comparing that, or let's say mentioning it, in, uh, and, and then we mentioned the attributes, some of the attributes of the creations. And we mentioned that Allah Ta'ala is the creator of everything, and that includes what? The good and the evil, the pain and the pleasure, the voluntary actions and the involuntary actions. Allah's knowledge is absolute, so Allah knows about us and He knows what we will do before we do it. Okay. So now let's talk about the next section. It says Allah is one without partners. Allah uh, and the creations, they are many. They have different shapes and colors. Even the same fruit can be sweet or sour. Meaning you can go to an apple tree, one piece of one apple will be what? Sweet. Another one will be what? Sour. sour. The same apple itself, part of it will be sweet, the other part will be what? Sour. sour. So the, the creations are a multitude. They're all different types of creations, the things we're familiar with and the things we're not what, For me. familiar with. Allah Ta'ala is the creator of all of them. But Allah is one. one. So now we're going to talk about Tawheed again from another angle or another aspect and talk about Tawheed as we just mentioned one, both of these actually so Tawheed we mentioned refers to the oneness of Allah right? the science of God's oneness Now, Tawheed, we can think of it as having two aspects. What we just talked about, that Allah creates all the actions, and that will be Tawheed. And the other aspect of Tawheed, Tawheed and Tawheed. So Taqdeer, if you look, the root letters are the Q, the D, and the R, right? Which is related to what? Qadr. Which means what? Allah, everything, let's say it this way. Everything occurs by Allah's destiny. Things are the way they are because Allah destined them to be that one. So taqdeer is related to the other. Other, the same, you see the roots, right? The Q, the D, and the R. Taqdeer refers to Allah Ta'ala destining everything. Things are the way they are because Allah Ta'ala specified them to be that way. Because we goes back to saying Allah is one. one. There's only one God, there's only one creator. Only one God. Your thoughts are created by Allah. Your actions are created by Allah. Your emotions are created by Allah. Every movement, every rest, every intention is created by Allah. There's only one God. What did Shaykh Abdullah say? We mentioned earlier. Allah is the creator and everything is the creation. creation. That's it. Tanzim. Or Taqdeer. Taqdeer. This is Taqdeer. And we'll talk about Tanzi. Tanzi, from the verb, the root, the, the N, the Z, and the H, the Nun, the Z, the Z, and the Ha, means uh, what we'll talk about, as, as we'll explain. Being clear of blemishes being clear 
fear of imperfection. Which would be in English related to the traditional meaning of the word what? Holy. So Allah Ta'ala is clear of blemishes, meaning defects. Somebody has a work record and he says he has no blemishes on his work record, mm -hmm. right? No defects. He wasn't caught in scandals, he wasn't stealing, for example. Being clear of imperfection, meaning what? Being clear of any created attribute. Because the nature of the creations is they're what? Dependent. And holy means what? Pure, meaning not, not, not clear of defects. The real, the real meaning, not like what they understand. What they call holy in English, many of these people, of course, is not holy. Okay. So tanzi, you can summarize it as what? Absolute, Allah's absolute, non-resemblance, resemblance. Or need for the creation. Allah's absolute non-resemblance and need for the creation. Because to be similar and attributing that to Allah Ta'ala will be what? An imperfection. Being in need is a what? Imperfection. Allah is clear of all of that. So this is, so when we talked earlier, we said Allah is the creator of everything. We're talking about what? Taqdeer. When we say Allah is clear of what motion and stillness and neediness. This is what tendency, and all of it goes back to Tawhi, that Allah is one. Say again for the person that when we mentioned that Allah is the creator of everything, mm -hmm. so everything happens by the what the color, the destiny of Allah. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the actions of Allah, mm -hmm. and in here tanzi we're speaking about Allah being clear of need. Allah is clear of what. Uh, dependency, to be clear of any similarity, that's what tendency. And all of it goes back to Allah being one, the science of Allah's oneness. And now we'll talk some more about this topic in particular. So now we're going to talk now more about tanzi. We, we mentioned what it is, that Allah Ta'ala is clear of all imperfections. So now we're going to talk a little bit more on this topic. The next section says, Allah is not a body, Allah does not have a size, and does not occupy space. So let's write this.
طيب. So this part will explain it, inshallah. So Allah is not, in Arabic, the term is jism, something composed. Allah is not a body. So Allah Ta'ala is clear of composition. So the table, composed of what? Wood. Wood, composed of wood particles. So Allah Ta'ala is not composed of something. We are composed of what? Flesh, okay. blood, yeah. bone, blood. various so, fluids in the body other than blood. Yeah. That we are composed. Allah Ta'ala is not composed of anything. So the, the nature of something being composed it would have, it would be, to use the term loosely, a body. And in Arabic, we mean two types of bodies. Allah is neither one. The tangible bodies, the things you can touch, you can grasp, and the intangible bodies, or ethereal bodies. Tangible, something you can grab. This pen is something tangible. You can grab it. Intangible, light. The illumination. You can't what grab. I'm not about the light bulb, yeah. but the light itself. You can't what grab it. You cannot grab the illumination. You cannot grab it. Take have a handful of it and take it in the other room. Doesn't work that way. But it's a type of body. It moves. Yeah. Light. Even the scientists in physics, they say light travels. Yeah. For sure, it moves. We give the example, if you're in a closet, you turn on the light, the light fills up the what? Closet. As soon as you open the door, what happens? Light spreads. Yeah. So the body, light is a type of body. So Allah is not a body, and there are two types of bodies, the tangible, the touchable bodies, like water. So something you can what? Grab, you can feel it. The wood, the flesh, the stone, for example, the glass, plastic, all of those are what? Tangible bodies. And then there are intangible bodies, like we just mentioned, the illumination, the soul, the spirit, this is an intangible body. It's a body, but it's not something you can what? See. You cannot grab it and oh, hold on yeah. to it. So it's intangible. So Allah is not a tangible, nor is Allah a t intangible body. So we, uh, this is important. There's a lot of, so we know that Allah is not a spirit. Or soul. Allah is not a spirit or a soul. Because the spirit and soul are the same. We're using it, we're using it with the same meaning. The ruh. Allah is not a spirit or a soul. The soul, or let's say, yeah, the soul is a spiritual body. It's creations. inside our what? physical body. Say what? Creation. It's a, and they're all yeah, creations. They're all creations. We don't know the reality of the soul, hmm. but it's still there. Body. Body. Mm -hmm. And we've mentioned before, when you sleep at night, the spiritual body will leave the physical body and travel. Hmm. This, is, this is known. People have reported it. But it stays attached. To it you. stays attached by the, there's like a spiritual umbilical. And this will stay attached, but the soul will drop. drop. Yeah. Sometimes the people, they'll, they'll see something in the dream. Sometimes you remember something. Yeah. And 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 you, know. you wake up and you, you get and you get a phone call and they say, oh, your cousin, he, he got shot last night. How do you know that? You, it's like, you knew it in the dream. You saw it in the dream. You saw something. Sometimes it's from that. Other things can happen because also the jinn can affect the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, though, the, 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 the mysteries of the... The, what you say, the unseen realms are amazing. But we're not like the materialists who deny the unseen realms. And we're not like other people who think that God is a being, like a physical or spatial being, like a soul. And this is a belief common among the Christians. Some of the pseudo, some of the fake Sufis, they believe that the spirit, the, the, the spirit merges with God. But well, that goes back to what we mentioned earlier, what? Lam yulid wa lam yulid. That nothing what comes out, nothing issues forth from God, and Allah did not issue forth from something else. So nothing merges with the Creator. Because it goes back to Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. It goes back to what we just said here. Allah is not a what? Jism. 
So Allah is not composed of a spiritual body. Allah is not composed of the spirit. And the spirits are not composed, are not, part, are not parts of Allah. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So Allah Ta'ala is not a jism. So Allah is not a body. And related to that, which the author mentioned, Allah does not have a size. Size that which has a size is dependent upon space. That which has a size is dependent upon space. <coughs> space is itself a creation. Existed before space without space. The science of Tawheed, the science of God's oneness. Allah does not have a size because he's not composed. Mm. Something that has a size has what? Dimensionality. All right. Something with a size has dimensions. All right. And if something that has dimension has size, <laughs> you can't get away from it. <laughs> I think that if we're going to argue, that's what you should do. Something, something, something with dimension that must have a size. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about spatial dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Something with spatial dimensions has a size. That way. They can't corner you. They can't corner you. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu Masha'Allah, you know the truth about your Lord. You build your confidence. You build your confidence. And you have clarity. Your thinking is clear. You look at these other guys and they got a bunch of like jumbled book in their head. Full of contradictions. And then when you show them their contradictions, they get what they mean. They have their own false. Okay, we got this copy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, this goes back to what? That Allah is one. Because we said space itself is a creation. Allah existed what? Before space, because Allah Ta'ala is the creator. There's only one God, one creator. So space is not God. So space has to be a creation. creation. So that means Allah Ta'ala, who is the creator of space, had to have existed before, before, space. before space. So then the one who existed before space would not have what size, would not have shape. what dimensions, shape. would not have shape, shape, would not have form, would not be attributed with motion, and would not be attributed with or stillness, yes. would not be attributed with a direction. So let's copy this. Allah is clear of direction. And then we'll, in the last section, we'll go into some more details. And then what is direction? Uh, 
up the distance between one object to another. The direction is a comparison here. Between the position of one spatial entity, meaning object, body, whatever word you want to use to give the meaning, something occupies space, to the position of another spatial entity. Direction is, missing the word is, is the comparison between the position of one spatial entity to the position of another spatial entity. So if you have one object, can you speak of its direction by itself? No. You have to compare it to another, another object. Something that's not an object, can you talk about its direction? No. no. You say happiness. You say what direction is happiness? It's a concept. You might say it's in your mind, but talk about like outwardly where you can say that person is happy, but the idea, the concept, it's still a like what? Concept. Yeah. I'm talking about objects, comparison of what? Objects. So we know that Allah is not in a direction. Why? Because Allah is not attributed with a position, with a place. Because position means place. And we know that Allah is not a spatial entity. So we say what direction is inapplicable to Allah. Inshallah, we'll stop here and then we'll finish up with the last section. Be it in length time.